Welcome to our latest Wondering Walks of Wonder adventure. Today we're headed up to Fort Mackinac on Mackinac Island, Michigan. Fort Mackinac is a state historic part and the fort has been fully restored and it's a living history museum. During this tour we'll learn about the fort, the history of the fort, see exhibits on the fur trade, the War of 1812, and the American Civil War. Fort Mackinac is a former British and American military outpost that was garrisoned from the late 18th century to the late 19th century here on Mackinac Island, Michigan. The British built the fort during the American Revolutionary War to control the str strategic straits of Mackinac between Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, and by extension the fur trade on the Great Lakes. The British did not relinquish the fort until 13 years after the end of the American Revolutionary War. Fort Mackinac later became the scene of two strategic battles for control of the Great Lakes during the War of 1812. As we tour the fort, we'll learn a little bit about the buildings, the people, and the events that happen on the fort. For instance, this is the post uh, commissary. The commissary was used to store food supplies such as pork, beef, vegetables, fowl, and many other food items. These were stored in, in huge quantities to get the garrison through the winter on Mackinac Island, which can be very isolated by storms and ice. The next building we're taking a look at is what one of the offices look like. This is kind of set up around 1855 or so. The offices were the administrative center of Fort Mackinac. Here, the commandant and his officers would issue daily orders, correspond with the Secretary of War and other Army officials in Washington, and manage an unending list of construction and maintenance projects. Every two months, the soldiers lined up outside this building where they were paid by the paymaster who set up a temporary office inside this building. One by one, the men would file through the office, sign the payroll, and receive their paychecks. In the years following the Civil War, enlisted men earned about $13 to $34 per month, while officers earned a little over $1,400 to $2,500 a year. This building that we're looking at here, that's along some of the office rows, is the quartermaster storehouse. This is where supplies, equipment, uniforms that were used by the soldiers were stored and issued out. Each soldier, soldier would receive an annual clothing allowance that included an undress work uniform as well as a formal dress uniform along with socks, shirts, and suspenders. Because of the frigid northern Michigan climate, Fort Mackinac soldiers also received overcoats, fur caps, and muskrat gloves. The post bathhouse was one of the last buildings that was constructed here on Fort Mackinac. Constructed in 1885 during what was called a hygiene fever, the building was a testimony to modern technology and featured six cast iron bathtubs and hot and cold running water. The post surgeon, Dr. John Bailey, would boast that the men bathed once, once a week or sometimes even more.
This building that we're now walking past and soon will be entering is the Soldier's Barrack that was dated from about 1859. This was home to the enlisted men. Originally, most of the soldiers lived on the first floor of this building, which is the largest building on Fort Mackinac, and the large central room on the second floor was a chapel for the soldiers. After Mackinac National Park was established and a second company of soldiers added in 1876, both floors were used for housing with the kitchens and mess halls in a back wing. Today, most of the uh, rooms that we'll see as we go through this building are set up to give you a look at what the soldiers' barracks look like, as well as the uh, largest exhibit, which talks about Fort Mackinac itself. As we go inside, we'll see rooms that were set up like uh, this one here that talked about kind of the, what the bedrooms and uh, living quarters would look like. Probably, thanks. Now the first fort on Mackinac Island was built by the French in 1715. This fort was called Fort Michelmackinac and was located on the southern end of the isle, island. The fort was an important trading post and it was also a strategic military location. In 1761 the British captured Fort Michelmackinac during the French and Indian War. In 1779 the British decided to move the fort from Mackinac Island to Fort Detroit. They believed that Fort Detroit was a more defensible position. However, the British abandoned Fort Detroit in 1781 and they moved back here to Mackinac Island. The British built a new fort on Mackinac Island in 1781 and called this fort Fort Mackinac. Constructed in 1879, the reading room allows us to explore popular titles and read the latest newspapers or periodicals of the 1880s. It also is a way of getting a better understanding of what it was like to be a soldier in the 1880s and learn why the U.S. Army felt it was a great idea to have reading rooms within the forts to expand the education of soldiers.
Fort Mackinac may appear to be a small and peaceful complex of 19th century buildings, but the pickets and cannon emplacements around its perimeter remind us that the soldiers were expected to defend the fort to the last man. There are three blockhouses here on Fort Mackinac. This is the north blockhouse. They form a triangle designed not only to withstand frontal attack, but, be to, but also to be the final place of refuge for soldiers and their families if an enemy broke into a fort. The walls you see in the blockhouses are three foot thick limestone walls. The officers' hill quarters, which were built around 1835, were home for two officers and their families. Inside, we can see features that are authentic to 1880 furnishings, such as the two apartments that tell the story of the life of a family here on Fort Mackinac, and what it was like to have a social, recreational, and family activity here on the fort. In 1812, the United States declared war on Great Britain. The first land battle of the war took place at Fort Mackinac. On July 17, 1812, a group of British soldiers captured Fort Mackinac from the Americans. This gave the British control of the Straits of Mackinac and allowed them to cut off American supplies from the West. The Americans tried to retake Fort Mackinac in 1814 but were unsuccessful. The port remained in British hands until the end of the war in 1815. After the War of 1812, Fort Mackinac remained an important military post. The fort was used during the American Civil War, although no battles were fought here, and it was also used during the Indian Wars following the Civil War. Eventually, the fort was abandoned in 1895.
There are several gun platforms here on top of Fort Mackinac. These gun platforms dominate the harbor and town that you'll see below. From here you'll see why British Commander Lieutenant Colonel Robert McDowell described the fort as a fortress built by nature for herself. The town nestles 150 feet below the cliff, almost the entire length of Market Street, the center of mid-America's 1820s fur trade is visible. Beyond is the Straits of Mackinac with Mackinac City anchoring the south end of the five mile long Mackinac Bridge and Upper Peninsula's St. Ignace at the north end. Constructed in 1828, the Post Hospital is Michigan's oldest hospital building. It was here that the fort's dedicated surgeons performed a wide variety of medical procedures from setting broken bones to delivering babies. While Fort Mackinac was generally a healthy outpost, so soldiers did suffer from disease and injury. The most common diseases were influenza, respiratory ailments, and stomach and intestinal disorders. You're now looking at one of the oldest buildings in the entire state of Michigan. This is the officers' stone quarters. Construction began in 1780 when British soldiers moved the fort fra, from Fort Michael-Mackinac to the island. The structure was always used as an officer's quarters and was often the home of the post co commandant. Inside we'll take a look at what some of the late 19th century furniture and lifestyles of officers' families was like here in these displays.
The wood quarters were constructed around 1816. They were constructed by American soldiers after the War of 1812 and served a variety of functions over the years. The building was used as a soldiers' barracks, yeah. <laughs> officers' quarters, a temporary hospital, laundress's quarters, and a storehouse. In 1889, the building was remodeled into the post canteen. Here, off duty soldiers relaxed while playing billiards, reading magazines, enjoying sandwiches, or sipping a mug of beer. As we step outside the wood quarters, we'll take a look at the parade ground. The parade ground was where soldiers were assembled for their daily roll call, given a Sunday morning inspection, and to practice their military drills. The parade ground was originally gravel, and on bright sunny days, the white gravel and white buildings created an uncomfortable glare in the soldiers' eyes. As a result, Captain Greenleaf A. Goodell ordered several of the buildings surrounded the parade ground painted brown in 1888 to relieve this glare. This, uh, glare. The final room we'll take a look at or building we'll look at is the post guardhouse that was constructed in 1828. The guard room was headquarters for the soldiers who were assigned to 20 to 24 hour shifts of guard duty, as well as this served as a jail cell for prisoners who were convicted of crimes or awaiting trial. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of historic Fort Mackinac. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, but also make sure to go take a look at a two-part series of videos that will do a walk through the historic village of Mackinac Island. Take care now. Bye-bye.